Welcome to the BCFL Weekly Recap. This week we feature a doubleheader from Walnut Hills High School with the top two teams in the league. First, it's the top-ranked 82 Chargers taking on the Southern Ohio Blaze at the South Field. Later on, we move up the hill where the Cincinnati Dukes, ranked second in the owner's poll, take on the Sin City Buccaneers. The first game of the day, the Blaze came out on fire. First play from scrimmage, quarterback Seth Becker keeps it himself. He works his way ahead for 11 yards. Next play, it's Devontae Johnson. He jukes his way and he picks up another 11 yards for the Blaze. Johnson again on the next play. He bursts around the edge. That's a 15-yard pickup and the Blaze are in business. Just when the Blaze have a look and run, Seth Becker has a chance to show off his arm. He finds Kyron Payne wide open, 28-yard touchdown. The Blaze take 11 plays, eat up 85 yards in all over 9 minutes of clock. And yes, they even kick the extra point afterwards. The Blaze are up 7 to nothing. Back come the Chargers after a nice return sets them up in Blaze territory. Nyquan Presswood takes his first carry of the game, 22 yards. That sets up Maurice Lovett at the one. He's searching and he finds the end zone for a touchdown. It's now 7-6, Blaze. Back come the Blaze on the last play of the first quarter. Johnson bursts up the middle. He picks up 13 yards. The drive continues. Becker finds Bodie Martin. He stretches his way, reaching. Can't quite get in the end zone. But on the next play, Becker is able to... First in from one yard out, another long play for the Blaze. Eight minutes left in the half, and their lead is now 13 to six. Chargers answer with their passing game. First, Levette hits Khalid Ali for an 18-yard gain along the sidelines, and that sets up this 23-yard pass. He drops it right in the bucket to Eric Evans. It's now 13 to 12, Blaze. That's a score at the half, but it'll be the Chargers with possession to start the second half. In the second half, the Chargers mix it up. First, love it again, going to the sideline to find Paul Jones this time. He picks up 20 yards. Later in the drive, it's Nyquan Presswood. He's bursting up the middle. That's a 14-yard pickup for the Chargers. Again, it's Presswood. He's bouncing outside this time, 11 yards. And that sets up love it. He scrambles. He's Pointing and he finds Paul Jones in the end zone for a touchdown. The Chargers have their first lead of the game. They're up 18 to 13. On the Blaze next play, Johnson takes it. He spins his way up for a 22 yard gain. But on fourth and six, Becker's pass. It is complete to Kyron Payne, but only for five yards. And we finally have a stop in this game. The Chargers take over on down. Chargers drive down to the one, but on fourth and goal number 30, Zach Ward, he swallows up Maurice Lovett, stops him on downs with goal line stand. The Blaze are still in this, and they know it. That's where the Chargers defense takes over. On first down, Devin Coleman slams down the ball carrier. Second down, it's Dylan Deluccio and Brandon Wooten meeting in the backfield. Third down, the Blaze are forced to throw it. And Trayvon Cordova is there for the interception. He has a clear path to the end zone. Touchdown. It's now 24-13 Charger. Last chance for the Blaze. And this time it's Dre Reap coming down with the interception. That's pretty much how things ended. The Chargers with strong second half pull it out. 24-13. Well, that was good on 13 of 18 passes for 159 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for a score. Presswood in his debut ran for 72 yards. Becker for the Blaze, a strong start, but his last two passes went for interception. And Johnson, another strong gain, 79 yards. Chargers really came up big in the second half. Went up just 23 yards to Blaze after halftime, 22 on the opening play of the half. Up the hill for game number two, where things got interesting early. The Bucks get a stop to start the game. They block the punt. Eventually, the Dukes will recover. But it looks like the Bucks are business, but there is a flag while they block the punt. Someone, another player did run into the punter's leg. That's a personal foul, and the Dukes maintain possession. 
Dukes take advantage driving inside the 10 yard line. That's where Brent Robinson takes the handoff. He's trying, working his way. Ball comes out right into the arms of Dominic Raven in the end zone. They're going to talk about this. But yes, that is a Dukes touchdown. They lead 6 0. The Bucks with a more conventional opening drive on their first play. Antonio Davis looks deep. He finds Darion Brown. He's good for a 37 yard pickup. And then just three plays later, it's Davis again going to the end zone, and it's caught by number three, Danny Spivey. That's a Bucks touchdown. They've tied it up six to six. Nice kick return sets the Dukes up, but Kamani Murray's pass is tipped and picked off by Vincent Rayford, and the Bucks take over. Greg Robinson takes the handoff. He goes ahead and delivers the blow for an 11-yard gain on the Bucks' first play after the pick. But on the next play, Davis, he rolls out. He's looking deep again, but th this time he just finds Jeremy Robinson. The problem is he's with the Dukes. That's a Dukes interception. On to the second quarter where Murray connects with number three, Anthony Metcalf, on third and four. That's a 21-yard pickup. Later in the drive, Murray again. This time it's to number three, Bryant Holloway. That is a gain of 16 yards. Later on, Murray again, this time number three, Anthony Metcalf. He goes along the sidelines and picks up another 16 yards. That all sets up Elijah Kelly from one yard out. He pushes his way into the end zone. The Dukes are up 12 to 6. The Dukes controlled the ball for over 22 minutes in the first half. The Bucks looked to rectify that with a nearly 10 minute drive to open the second half. This nine yard pass goes to Greg Johnson. Later on, Antonio Davis finds Braxton Combs for 12 yards. But on a fourth and seven from the 13, Davis looks to the end zone, cannot quite complete the connection, and the Dukes stop him on down. On to the fourth quarter where things get weird again. Murray finds Dante Jackson of the middle. He is not touched, gets back up, but then he fumbles the ball, recovers it. He is touched this time before he gets up. Well, that is good for a 31-yard gain for the Dukes. Next play, Murray goes back to pass. Kovion Spikes makes the adjustment. He hauls it in for a touchdown. But well, wait a minute. If we go back to the snap, this is number three, Bryant Holloway. This is number three, Anthony Metcalf. You can have two number threes. They can't be on the field at the same time. It's a flag for illegal participation. Take the points off the board. Instead, it's Cheese Brown with a diving interception for the Bucks. They're still only down 12 to six with 11.48 left in the game. Tony Davis goes to work for the game time drive. He hits Danny Spivey here for 16 yards. Later on, he connects again with Spivey, good for 10 yards. A little later on, it's Terrance Harrison, that's good for 11 yards. Then he's going deep for the end zone, but instead he finds Dante Jackson, the diving interception. He takes it out, the Dukes are still in the lead, about five minutes to go. Bucks get a stop and get the ball back with 3 minutes 31 seconds to go on the second play of well, that drive. John Dobbins with the sack. Gohan celebrate. That's a big play. And okay, that's a little much. And well, it's still going on. And that's going to draw the flag. It's going to be a first automatic first down for the Bucks. They take advantage of Tenno Davis. Back and steady scrambles. He goes ahead 12 yards to the 36. Later on, Davis looking over the middle. The pass is broken up, but that's pass interference. Here come the flags. The Bucks are down to the 22 yard line. Next play, Davis scrambling. He's looking. There's no flag for a late hit here. The player is pushed in Davis, but there is a flag for holding. That'll make it first and 20 for the Bucks. Davis decides to go for broke on the next play. Looking for the end zone instead. The pass is broken up. Second and 20. Next play. Davis looks short. Finds Marcus Commodore to pick up seven yards. Third and 13. Next play. Davis looking deep. Oh, has to settle for the short pass. It's now fourth and 10. Last chance for the Bucks. 40 sec 46 seconds to go. Davis looking to the sideline. And Brian Holloway breaks up the pass. 
the Dukes will hold on for the 12 to 6 victory. Murray was good for 15 of 23, passing for 181 yards for the Dukes. He did throw two picks. Brian Holloway had five tackles, three pass breakups, including the one at the end. He also had 55 all purpose yards, a 16 yard reception, 11 yard punt return, and a 20 yard kick return. Davis was 15 of 30 for 156 yards for the Bucks. He had two interceptions. He also ran five times for 28 yards. The Dukes, very effective on third down, 7 of 10. The Bucks just 2 of 6. In other games around the BCFL, the West Portsmouth Tanks went on the road to beat the West Virginia Storm 14 to 12. It could already have playoff implications. The Columbus Gladiators won the Battle of Columbus against the War Eagles 22 to 12. The Warriors with a 38 nothing win against the famed City Rhinos. The Ohio Rage take out the Kentucky Huskies 18 to 14 and the Port City Spartans with an 18 to 6 win against the Capital City Mustangs. Looking at the standings, the Gladiators, Takes, and Spartans all start 1-0 in the Eastern Conference's Red Division, while in the Blue Division, the Warriors with the leg up, they're the only team to win in Week 1. In the Western Conference, the Dukes and Rage both start 1-0 with the Blaze 0-1, where in the Blue Division, the Chargers are the lone team to win. They're atop at 1-0. Looking ahead to this weekend's games, the Ohio Rage and the Cincinnati Dukes face off in the only battle of undefeated teams. The Southern Ohio Blaze travel to the West Portsmouth Tanks as both teams continue tough early season schedules. The 82 Chargers and the Cincinnati Buccaneers return to Walnut Hills to face each other this time. The famed City Rhinos travel to face the Port City Spartans. The West Virginia Storm travel to face the Warriors. The Capital City Mustangs go to Columbus to take on the War Eagles, while the Columbus Gladiators go on the road facing the Kentucky Huskies. And finally, a look at the owner's poll after the first week of action. The Chargers hold on to the top spot, but the Dukes have closed the gap at number two. The Tanks become the highest ranked team in the East and even gain a first place vote. They jump the Gladiators with the Warriors right behind them. Then it's the Rage and the Storm, Spartans, Blaze, Buccaneers, War Eagles, Huskies, Mustangs, and Red Rhinos.